Hi there, survivors. A new week brings a new episode of The Garage. Today in our show, reviewing the changes which have happened over the years since open beta start, batteries and plastic, where did they come from and why do we need them? Craft athlete on two reapers with 4,000 points of power. And much more. Let's go. Survivors, this episode of The Garage is next to the last. We learned a lot, seen a lot, and have fought hundreds of battles. Before long, you'll make your own history of the wastes. It's the end of May, which means that about a year ago, Crossout was released in open beta. The events have occurred so that we can analyze how the project changed over the last 12 months. Along with the start of testing, Crossout was released on consoles. You can play the game on PS4 and Xbox One and download it through official stores. The new audience has become an integral part of our community over the last year. Due to the technical specifications, the updates are released later compared to PC version, but are already much quicker. Meanwhile, Crossout for PC has become friendlier and more technological. In summer, the game was released in Steam, and you could connect your new account to the already existing Gaijin profile. The gamers have not lost their progress. You could also use NVIDIA Shadow Play resources, including recaps. The stability of the game has been increased thanks to constant optimization. From July 1st, Crossout leaves DirectX 9 in order to concentrate on DirectX 11. This lifts technical restrictions and the game becomes even more beautiful. Factions with unique parts is the biggest feature of the Wastes. Over the last year, three factions have joined the battles. At the end of May, Steppenwolves appeared. Dawn children made their presence felt in the fall, while fire starters began burning in winter. Military Brotherhood members have familiarized survivors with mechanical legs, howitzers, and guided missiles. Scientists have added hovers, generators, force fields, and plasma emitters. Shamans went all out with catapults, harpoons, and flamethrowers. You can learn the history of Dawn Children in Garage Episodes 9, 10, and 11. Firestarters have received their fair share of attention in the episodes 29, 30, and 31. Now, all of these parts have become casual in battles, changed survivors' crafts, and appeared in the goods top on the market. We carefully watch the stats and change the parameters if needed. Always fighting by the same rules is boring. Different new modes appeared in Crossout over the year. Big Black Scorpion's melee have given you the opportunity of fighting on the same rides. The parts have a common heatbox, that's why crafts explode with a single hit. The major goal is to make as many kills as possible in four minutes of combat. Bedlam PvP mode is the ultimate fighting. It's been conceived as a sandbox, where you could test rides and sharpen your teamwork. It is everything necessary, including no long waiting after death and limitless numbers of respawns. You can even play from the very start, but there will be no reward. A more classical training mode offers the sharpening of skills with AI rides. It's called Patrol. In the spring of 2018, the Rat King opened the Royal Battleground. Up to 32 survivors battle not only each other, but also the Blizzard, wiping out anything in its way. The last one who survives wins. The hard-edged amusement hit the taste of the players, and now we're making it perfect. Some updates are already on the new patch. You can learn all the nuances of the Rat King tastes in the 40th anniversary episode of The Garage. PvE aspect has been present in the game even before the open beta, but we've updated it almost completely. We've added new maps and missions, came up with new concepts, and as a result, 
turned missions into full-blown stories with their own plot lines. Episodes 36 and 37 uncover the details. All the available game modes are shown as bars in the global map. It's now realized as an interface element, but it already makes the world of the wastes more complete. In the future, the functionality will be widened, but we're not talking about open world yet. In the final episode, we'll remember the past holidays, talk about parts rebalancing, teammates, and new characters. How has your life changed in the wastes over the year? What was it, and what is it now? Let yourself get a bit nostalgic in the comments. Global changes are important, but there are some even more acute issues. Apart from Leviathans in the Clan Wars, the new patch, 0970, has laid aside several significant changes. Among them, there are completely new resources, batteries and plastic. Batteries are procured as part of a new mission with a corresponding name. To take part in it, you need a ride of at least 5,000 power points and the fifth level of reputation of any advanced faction. Batteries are used in production of legendary and relic parts. The wires, in turn, are no longer needed for parts of such rarity. The only exception is containers, produced on the expert detonator workbench. Their recipes look like this. Plastic may be obtained in a separate raid of an average difficulty. It'll be needed in production of epic parts. Unlike the first case, the wires won't disappear from the process, but you'll need fewer of them. You won't need to be bitter about getting the new resources. As with copper, described in the previous episode, we have a beautiful solution. Those surviving the catastrophe use the so-called swap meats for the resale. It's weird, of course. Why would you need it when you had the opportunity of buying something new? After the apocalypse, the production decayed, and now items are sold not only second-hand, but also third and even fifth-hand. Back in the days at the swap meets, you could find gimmicks straight from the mega policies. But alas, the resources aren't limitless. Then, what's the point of swap meets these days? You can learn it yourself. In the second half of May, there will be the first genuine swap meet in the wastes. Survivors will be able to change accrued wires for batteries and plastic, and the rate will be one to one. For 100 wires, you get 100 batteries or plastic. For a thousand, a thousand. If you've been constantly laying aside the widening of the warehouse or the storage of drafts, here's your lucky time. Now, for the upgrade you'll need, a hundred points of scraps, 350 points of electronics, 200 points of batteries, 500 points of copper. Using the storage of drafts also gives you an additional exhibition slot, and all the new players get four cells. You can always find the full list of charges with all the corrections at the official website. A special test drive episode is dedicated to a single but impressive example. The craft boasts of almost 13,000 points of power and over 4,000 points of durability. Don't worry about it accelerating slowly. It's hard enough to deal with, even at this speed. The most pleasant thing to do on Reaper is to watch as the parts of the enemy are coming off rhythmically and beautifully under the ceaseless fire of two Reapers. A couple of increased ammos allow for doing this almost endlessly. The design here gets pretty much the same attention as the concept. The generator is hidden below, the form is geometrical and strict, eight different dyes make a pleasant tone with the play of colors. You just see and understand. The newbie can't get behind the wheel of this craft. Leviathan lovers, why are you still here? Four out of five. Well, that's it for today, survivors. 
Fight and train, keep designing and trading. See you in a week, right here in the garage. Tell your friends about the show if you like it, and leave your comments. We're always ready to hear you out. So long.